Welcome to Cow Horse, Full Contact by Ben Self, with host Chris Dawson and Russell Dilday. So, here we are in a tent. This is our first tent podcast, isn't it, Ben? Is it? Yeah, I don't think we've had a tent. we got motorcycles. We've got, we're going to have American rodeo contenders. We're going to have, there's no telling what's going to come through here. We are in the uh, community coffee hospitality tent sponsored by APHA. I don't know. Oh, look, there's got, statues of Matt Mills sliding. There it is. Sliding. You bet. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> I had to look back there. And check. <laughs> yeah, they this, got this statues of you don't even know about I, yet. I, I, <laughs> I've been in here. I had some coffee this morning. I've had a nice nap in here already. Oh. I mean, this, <laughs> yeah. Posted up on the couch, did I've you? Just been, I have one horse. I, I rode it, and I just... What do I just, do? I'm just, yeah, I can't. Like, what do I do with my hands? I, I don't do my hands. <laughs> I don't do anything. So I'm just here like a carny. Russell's tooth just literally fell out. It for, didn't. I it did. did. It fell right out of your mouth. You were laughing. At I did, though. Yeah. I didn't Summer. know if I should say something. I was looking at it, and I was like... What in the world? Are we, are we, we should have deer in here. We should have deer in here too, and we can see how many. They've well, got like six teeth between well, them. Yeah, be, gonna, there'd be more gum was, frontage than there would be. I was going to say he's going to pop them all out. <laughs> oh, I had to send my wife a picture of you guys because I told her I'm doing what I'm doing, and she's she's not believing me. I don't know what she thinks. I don't I'll be believe doing. it. So I sent it, and she saw. As soon as she saw your face, she just started laughing. <laughs> I get that a lot. <laughs> he is like a stand-up comic. Every time he stands up, somebody laughs. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You're a close second. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he stands up slower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then this old, this old boy, he's cleaning boots. It's, I know. We're, we're going to we're gonna have to hit him up. He's got his throne in here. That's why I told my I wife. Know. We walked down and says, look, they brought a throne for you. Yeah, so... I don't know this will probably not come out before this happens, but uh, anyway. It might. Today. Yeah, yeah congratulations to on their victory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Go team. Hey, if you can stay PG-13, it'll drop today. Does I don't you, you, you're, you, you're writing checks that I don't know that Ben can cash. You can cash it, can't you, Ben? Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, but just, just throw it down. It sounds like there's some story behind this, though, when he looked right at you. And <laughs> <laughs> define, can you define PG-13? <laughs> can you define? I need to know. Where are our boards? Do we have boundaries? Well, I mean. Is there a safe word? Or? <laughs> yeah. Watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my wife. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! It's gonna be one of these kind of podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, yeah, just PG thirteen. Yeah, okay. I'm old school, so I don't do in the vulgarities. He's religious, so we don't do the GDs. Everything else, yeah, which is not much, unless yeah. it's Doug Williamson. Then, then you just let it is guy like go for it. Yeah. Well, but, you get a certain age, and I think you get a pass too. Yeah. yeah. No, you for know. sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm not there yet. No. <laughs> no. Mid 30s. Yeah. <laughs> so, what about? So, you are a new resident to Texas. Yeah. Matt Mills Ran Horses, located in Weatherford, Texas. Yes, sir. How you liking it? I'm loving it. I had my best year ever last year, so I'm, I'm really liking it. <laughs> <laughs> why didn't I do why this? Have I done this years Idiot. ago. <laughs> yeah. Idiot. I mean, why get those good weather out there in Scottsdale? And, uh, yeah. So, you're, I mean, because you've been in Scottsdale a long time. I was there 25 years. Yeah. Whoa! Yeah, that's a big change. Whoa! Yeah. Huge change. Yeah, there's grass. I got to mow. I, I'm back to mowing. <laughs> which I grew up in Southern California. I had to mow grass. One of the things I hated, I hated to mow the darn grass, and I didn't have to do that in Arizona. And now I'm back to mowing grass. Back to mowing grass. But you back to winning too. Yes, sir. So yeah. Mowing <laughs> dough. <laughs> <laughs> Bring the green, baby. <laughs> green, green, green. <laughs> got you one of them zero turns. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what? If I'm being truthful. I haven't mowed the grass yet. I <laughs> <laughs> but I think about it I all the time. <laughs> yeah, somebody's probably mowing it right now. <laughs> when I first moved to the place that we've got, I went and bought a zero turn mower, right? Yeah. And I drove that thing. I mowed like the Dickens for about three days, yeah. right? I mean, and it was, I really enjoyed myself. Yeah, they're fun. But yeah, it's, 
my dad got a zero turn. He said, I'm going to go plant more trees so I have stuff to go around. <laughs> this thing's so fun to turn. <laughs> you know, the worst thing about a zero turn, though, is you can't, it doesn't have, it's not convenient to drink, like, a Gatorade while you mow. Really? No, the, because you got two hands on the deal, right? Yeah. But in the problem. straightaways, yeah, you, you can kind of. You can, yeah, you can. I mean, but that's for professionals. Yeah. <laughs> Ace can do it. He can drink. <laughs> Yeah. He drives and holds it, and it's got a long <laughs> straw, holds it in his armpit. <laughs> got a camel back. <laughs> so anyway, here we are at the American. Yeah. Matt is one of the top five NRHA participants. That in the world. That we are like, not just nationally. World. World. You know Thank you, Russell. Appreciate it. World. World. Appreciate it. <laughs> so yeah. what about it? Talk to us about this event. Man, I tell you what, it's incredible. I mean, uh because it started last season, we didn't even know about this. So then about halfway through, you start seeing, you know, the press on the, you know, hey, this is what it's going to be, the top five. And I know when, you know, when you're doing your thing, you kind of just, you know, I'm not thinking about it, I'm just going showing. And then towards the end of the year, though, I started looking and going, hey. wait a minute. So... I started like those rookie horses and, and, and <laughs> everybody which, in know, the pool. Which we're schooling. I'm like, hey, you know what? I think it'd probably be good if we just keep our hand down on this one and just see. Uh, yeah, but man, there's only, it's only, you know, you're only going to win. You know, it doesn't matter. I think we sh- So I, I, I did. I did start Drake because I thought, you know, I don't want to get beat by a thousand bucks. Oh. Right? And I didn't. So, so I kind of got caught up. It was kind of fun. I kind of got in. <laughs> I started hauling some down the road. Really, what, what helped me though was I. I had a great reign in futurity. Right. But, um, but yeah, now to actually, I don't know about for you, but walking in that, in that arena in the field, I, you know, look around and you go, wow. Whoa. Look at where we've all come. That, it's where unbelievable. Where we're at. Yeah. Unbelievable. Got to thank Teton, you know, oh yeah, my goodness. Thomas Toll for putting this together. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. The stage is, the stage right here is going to be off the chain. Oh, look, there's my lovely bride. You're just in time. Hey. What? Come on in, Come on and sit down. Come on in. The water, Here, the water's I got a just seat. right. I got a seat for you, woman. The water's just right. <laughs> oh. So. I'll even let you sit next to you. you know, so, just before me. we get in too involved in this, um, <laughs> cause Ben, you can edit this Disclaimer. out. Disclaimer. Oh, no, we can't edit this out because this is dropping. Okay, never mind. What's up, babe? <laughs> <laughs> now we. <laughs> Oh, that's too much of a tease. This can go in. All it's right. okay. It can go in. Okay, put it back on. So I just came from the stalls, and Lindy is over there, primed and ready for this. She's had, like, two cocktails, and so she is ready to talk oh, to you guys. Oh, yes. sweet. So little you got to do her next. Okay, little bird came in. Yeah. Mm. There we go. Mm-hmm. She would need more than two cocktails. Liquid courage. <laughs> no, she doesn't. She literally told me, go tell Chris, I'm ready, is what she said. I'm ready. You haven't heard that in a while. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's new. Check, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, Will and Matt, we'll see you later. <laughs> I just dropped my phone. <laughs> Can you reach that for me? Thanks. It's embarrassing. And your wife teed that up. Your, for you. your tooth she is embarrassing, Russell. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> now you're being redundant. We've already addressed Russell's tooth on air. <laughs> not with me sitting by him, though. <laughs> she can't not look. Is that connected to a palate? Oh, my God. Uh, you want to cry on? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> I think she just threw up in her mouth. <laughs> this is going to be more useful than I thought <laughs> Looked like Justin earlier <laughs> <laughs> oh. So Back to the Back to where we are Right, yeah, Teton Teton Ridge is American We're in Arlington and how the race changed in the middle of the year So what do you think next year, Matt? How much different is it going to be? And how much is this going to help all the small shows that everybody's going to be hauling like huh. old days of rodeo. Hey, send a load to Temecula and a load to here and I'll fly there and get on. And I'm going to tell you what, the first show I went to in Jacksonville last year, it was quiet. I slipped down. There were some derby horses and I won a lot of money. 
As soon as I pulled in this year, I looked around and went, oh, dang. Everybody, <laughs> everybody and their brother was there. And it, so, I mean, yeah, right, right out of the gate. And people are talking about it already. They're like, oh. How are we going to get there next yeah, year? And I got guys telling me, oh, I would have got you if I had a, you know, I didn't show this at this one or this one. And I would have got you. Um, so, I mean, people are thinking about it, you know. But then what's fun is to have the top five cow horse guys have you guys here. And the cutters, because we, we're never under the same right. roof. Not very often. Now the run per million. Now we're starting to get there. But so to sit and watch some of this stuff and to, you know, sit and BS with guys and kind of see, you know, hey, what are you looking for and whatnot? That's a lot of fun for me. But I'm, I'm just glad the raining is before the cow horse because <laughs> I see I rode in the same arena. You guys are going to go down the fence in. And I talked with Russell about it earlier, and I know when we were, we were talking, and you are like, oh, no, no, it's no problem. We're going to do this, and we're going to do that. I can't wait to get off my horse <laughs> and sit right there so and let's watch. see how that worked out for you. Oh, man, it's going to be exciting. I can't yeah, wait. I'm either going to look real smart or real stupid. I can't wait. I'm going to enjoy watching. <laughs> That's be- kind of right. You got the best go because you get to go, and then you get to yeah. Hey, you guys have fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm going <laughs> to sit. I get to and- watch you. Yeah, I'll watch the cutting. My teammate is, is number one. I'm, I'm going to watch draw. that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then they got the, it's a little longer arena transition between yeah. you guys. Cheryl Crow. Yeah. So, uh, oh, my, one of my favorites <laughs> of all time. I wonder if she needs help. I could hold the mic. With your He's tooth? already wiping her brow, so I, that job. No, that, that's Marin Morris. Oh, right. Very different. I'll take Cheryl. And I'll help with Marilyn if you're on her. Wait till you... Uh, <laughs> Drop your tooth in front of her while she's singing, and she she's seen it, man. she has been on it's roadie time. I'll, it's no big deal. <laughs> she already knows me. <laughs> Remembering you from your glory days, being a groupie. Yeah, I'm gonna right. tell you. I'm a friend with Matt, the guy the statues are here for. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. He does have a mind up. I know. I know. Did that uh, video get back to your wife yet? Oh. Oh. <laughs> that video? Right. <laughs> the one from the arena? Right, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I yeah did. she got it. Okay, well, that's she good. Got it, and she's on her way here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> so, with that race, I know that for me last year, I mean, usually we don't, I don't pay no attention. Yeah. Right. I yeah. mean, you just, you're just going at it. Mm-hmm. And like I say, you kind of, I'm always kind of excited when that top riders list comes out to see how far I fell, how far my wife bumped me down. <laughs> but, um, you know, Sarah's husband. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> if you met Sarah's husband, <laughs> <laughs> but so like last year, you, I mean, once that deal come out and it was like showed who was it kind of in the hunt, it was like, Hey, you kind of start keeping an eye on it. But at the same time, you knew how much, I mean, the fraternity was going to make such a, I mean, dadgum, it didn't really yeah. matter. I mean, yeah. you got to roll in that fraternity and get business handled there. And so do you think, do you think people will go hard enough that it will reduce the impact that the fraternity will have on that year in standing? I mean, but that dadgum, all the fraternities pay so hard, so good. I know. That's a great, that's a great question. I think, I know with our rate of fraternity paying 350 you almost are going to punch your ticket for sure. Almost. But I'll tell you what, looking at the money, looking at, uh-oh. Looking at the money, though, I think it's possible that could happen, that that you could still get in without right. maybe winning the trip. I mean, you, you're going to have to have a lot of things fall your way, but it's possible. But what the fun part is that we're just even talking about it, yeah. you know, thinking about it. Like, like for me, when I showed the Randy Futurity, you know, of course, you want to win. You know, we got our different levels and stuff. I ended up winning the level three. I was dead last. And I and my horse was good, but I knew, I, you know, I think I was ended up being six in the level four. But And so, you know, you, you know, as a competitor, I'm like, oh, this is great. This is good, but it's not where you want to be. Not right? where I wanted to be. But then when they, when and actually they held my score. Then they came back. Oh. Yeah, so I'm sitting there at the end. And because they thought I had to freeze up and roll back. Then they call out my score, and then they go, oh, yeah, you did win the level three. I'm like, oh, awesome. And then I didn't realize that it was paying more. And um, and then somebody goes, oh, hey, they, you know, punch me in the ribs. When my wife started punching me in the ribs, she's like, you made the American. You made the American. I'm like, no way, no way. And I started looking, people started texting me. I was like, wow. Son of a gun. So it's like, you know, 
went from thinking I was kind of, I think I was like seventh or eighth or something like that, and then bam. So I do think this year, I think, um, I think it's, I mean, of course, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow night, but it's sure looking like it's going to be a hell of an event. Mm -hmm. But I I would think people are going to dang sure. I don't know. I mean, we're not like we're going to run any harder than we always do. Right. But we, but instead of taking that, that trip to Cabo, you might go ahead and run down to San Angelo <laughs> or Abilene and go hit that show. Yeah. Right. I'm skipping. I'm skipping a vacation the summer go show. It, you know? it it's going to be helpful for the shows. Mm-hmm. You know, like being a show for uh, that. Mm-hmm. I putting them on. I can see how much it's going to change everything. You have the run for a million and this mm-hmm. now. I mean, it's a, it's going to change the whole game, and I wonder about how much more valuable it makes an intermediate rider getting to count the double money. So it's wow. not like the intermediate riders out in this yeah. format. It's not just um, all open money now. Like Lee, I, he wins, and yeah. and you got intermediate money, mm-hmm. and I don't know who else. Lindy, it's kind of a nice Fernando. incentive to kick, kick them, make sure you got, Fernando. you know. And, and that's going to get talked about. It. It's getting talked about already. Like, they're already talking, like, well, maybe we don't want to include that and whatnot. And I could see the argument to no, but then also, like you're saying, it puts a lot of new people in the game. Which, Big um, game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, no, I agree. Well, then you look at, like, uh, the last Cowboy reality TV show. I was talking to one of the producers the other day. So it sounds like Cow Horse, the Cow Horse, you guys, and the Cutters are going to be included in this show this hmm. time. Oh, we got a text message regarding that the other day. So I yeah. heard a little rumor of that. And I was going to... It's going to happen. We were going to visit with you about that as well. Because you are, I mean, you're made to be a movie star, though. Oh, boy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, natural. Mr. Natural on the camera. Well, I think I'm, I'm just trying to just trying to get in where I fit in. <laughs> 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 Why are you writing Russell notes? Test. I was asking what the pen was for because oh. Ben gave us a pen. It's for me. I know. I thought she was like taking notes on what I say. Thank uh, you. I say. Yeah. Thank you. It's an edit. It's an edit, Ben. I'm I'm writing highlight notes. <laughs> so, how many seasons of the Last Cowboy have you been involved in? Well, two. And like one episode, two seasons and like one episode. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that, well, like, yeah, probably a total episode in the third season because I didn't make the last year's run for a million. So they, they show me. Oh. So I watched the first episode and they show me not making it. <laughs> and then, and, and they then, killed JR off. <laughs> yeah, then, yeah. Then you could fast forward to the last episode and they show me commentating for the run for a million. Nice. So, so I've been, I've, I've been, a, I've been a part of two and a total of. Two, two full seasons and one one episode. Mm. I got you. So there's, there's been three seasons. There has. Gotcha. That's yeah, what we, you do when you can't make it. You commentate. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I have more hours than anybody. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. That was it. If I, I don't want to ever do that again, but that was a... Enjoyed that? Well, that run for a million was the greatest oh, running I've ever man. seen in my life. I mean, it was incredible. Yeah, we got to be there for that one. I was on uh, Child Watch Detail. But uh, ah, so yeah. I don't know that I got the full effect. Yeah, but I it had, was what I watched was really oh, well, really good. We had multiple angles. I felt like I felt like I was like on Sports Center. Like I was like, man, this I'm up here like. Should you I know. back it up, slow it down, draw on the screen, yeah, stuff like yeah. that. Give it the old Terry Bradshaw. Yeah, yeah. I was feeling like Charles Barkley. Up yeah, there. <laughs> <laughs> Howard Cosell. Yeah, <laughs> nah, he was before my time, but I, I read about him on. I, yeah, I read about him. <laughs> Ditka. <laughs> Matt, what was the famous one that they made? Matt. Oh. Madden. Yeah, John Madden. Madden. John John Madden. Madden. Yeah, the football game. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, that could be you. What do do you guys think? Because, I mean, I think think the raining kind of got the... You know, know, raining kind of got the first push, which I think it helped everybody, though. But now, you know, it looks like Cow Horse and Cutting is up next. Like, what do you guys... What do you guys feel I, about I think it? I think that uh, I'm glad. I, I'm interested to see who they who they select and who agrees to do it yeah. in the Cal Horse deal. You know, I think you guys did a fantastic job, and 
yeah, my wife and I kind of visited about it. And we're like, <laughs> this is really good for them. And I don't know that we have that in us. Oh, you do, though. Uh, you just got to put the mics on early and you forget about them. And that's like worms are bad. And- <laughs> well, it's not that kind of show. But for a couple, you know, I'm in for a week or so before, yeah, you and then forget. you forget they're there. Well, I'm going to tell you what, doing that, you will forget. Like, you start off thinking, okay, I'm not going to, we're not going to get into this, it. we're yeah. not going to get into that. And then next thing you know, you're into all of that. And, and you then didn't you know. go, Whoop. whoops. Oh, I got my mic on. But, I, you know, for me, though, I would tell you to really think about doing it because you got to, you know, you got to think it's so good for the whole industry. And my, myself personally, I, I mean, you know, I mean, there's certain things, right, that you're not going to talk about. But um, if we want to try to get it any better, somebody's going to have to get outside the box and get out of their comfort zone. And I'll tell you what, it's, I mean, you're seeing, you're seeing it. it um, it's, it's incredible. And I mean, you know, and I'm right there with, ta- you know, at Taylor's. Right. Taylor Sheridan's ranch. You know, that's when we're talking about the last cowboy run for a million. He's not stopping. He's going to continue pushing. Yeah. Well, he is. He's done such he's great things. He's exploding, and it's exploding so fast now, Matt, it's almost hard to. And I don't think we've even scratched the surface. Mm-mm. We haven't even started because just imagine to me what's happening now is what happened <clears throat> for the WWF. Mm-hmm. These guys are making nothing. UFC. Getting drinking money and yeah. just putting on a little show yeah. and then explode. Then the UFC, same thing. Then X Games, same thing. What other athlete out there is as cheap as us oh, right now? And Right. And then look at the dollars that, I mean, the horses that we're riding. I mean, it doesn't make already, any sense. Already it's insane what they're well, I don't know about for you guys, but in the cow horse, it is insane what our horse prices have done. Oh, absolutely. It's the same It's the same here. And like you said, look, at now we're here. You know, Taylor started it, and then now here's Teton. Well, then, you know, somebody else is going to come. All of our all these, all these, of our purses are all going up. Yeah. You know, people getting competitive. They want to jump in on it. You know, what's the next event that's going to pop up? You right. know what I mean? it's Yeah, shoot, in the last two years, the world's greatest entries have doubled and the purse has doubled in the last two years, I believe. Crazy. Yeah, I mean, it was it was 78. It was a whole day. It was a whole day. That, like, one event was a whole there day. There were 78 open entries and 30 kids. Yeah. <clears throat> and now Ray had the uh, and they're women's. Committed, and they're committed to doing the world's greatest non-pro or whatever they're going to call it. And up like, there in Tulsa. Like that world's great. You know, the only thing next, I mean, I've gone to the last two years, and to me, that might be the best event I've ever, I've ever gone to watch live. And I think the only thing, the next logical step is TV for that. I mean, yeah. I think it's made for that. It's, you know, the, the action Drama. is so quick. Oh, yeah. And then a guy could be right there. You got your favorite. It's over. I mean, you're thinking, <laughs> oh, I'm watching Tyler Merrill on the catch ride. I'm going, oh, this story is just incredible. And then, boom. No. Didn't happen. You <laughs> what know? about? Or um, watching, uh, you know, Sarah. And you're going, oh, man, I wanted to win. I wanted to win. I wanted to win. And then something, you Go know, on. a bag, you know, a cow, whatever, you know. I mean, so you're watching this shit and it's like stuff over and uh it's yeah it's like it's like you know how about shane stefan is literally 12 to 14 inches from winning two consecutive titles and yeah. misses that turn he's on it and it's his second turn i mean it's he's he's head and shoulders and it, that's what i love about it yeah i mean it's sad but to watch Right. You never know it's over because it's over after the first turn. He's yeah. got it. He, all he's got to do is just wrap this deal up and, oh, just See, inches short, oh hang up, it's done. See, and now I think, too, like a lot of our audience is getting educated because they've seen raining. They're, they're, they're seeing cow horse. They've seen cutting. You know, I mean, you know, roping, you, you know, you see Everywhere. that at every rodeo. But now you start, I mean, the story's set up there. Now you say, okay. You same person is going to take the same horse with the same bridle. They're going to do all of these events and do them well. I mean that's uh, so. I mean, getting back to it. I mean, I think I think everything that's happening right now is going to just keep bringing everything up. So I I don't think there's going to be a lot. I sure hope not. I, I think right. it's a great time to be training horses. You're darn right. Yeah, you're I darn do right. too. So speaking of that, now that you're uh, back here in cutting horse country, we're going to see you. Be quiet, sir. Brent, <laughs> we're going to see you branch out. 
Try a little snaffle bit and oh, try a little bridle horse. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So the hardest thing, I've been trying to find a bridle horse, and everybody says it's, you know, it's like, good luck. Try to yep. find one. you got to make one. I said, well, I don't know how to make one. So I have a three-year-old this year that I've been uh, messing around with on the flag, working some cows with, you know, working some cattle and stuff. Um, I, I'm, gonna, I'm going to. You know, it's like, you know, it's like a, you know what it takes to do something at a high level and then sure. just try to say you're going to step over and try something else. And, you know, I don't want to just go out and just be doing it. So... I'm treating it like golf. I'm putting my golf clubs down, and I'm saying, "All right, I'm the time that I would spend playing golf." Oh I'm yeah, spend this is for fun. Riding horses. So, yeah, I might be coming over to your door. I went yeah. over to Corey Pounds a few times. Um, you know, he's a buddy of Taylor's, and, and went and, and worked worked cattle on this horse. So, so yeah, I think I, I I don't know yet, but I think going down a fence would. I think I maybe missed my calling. I think I think it maybe would it would suit my style more than uh, than even the raining. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. You're. I mean, it's it's such a deal that it seems like everybody that comes over and tries it, it doesn't take very long. And there's no middle ground. Like you come over there and you either love it, or yeah, it's a pain. It's uh, it's <clears> not <throat> for me. You know, whatever. But yeah, it's. It's hard. I can it, tell you it, what. It's hard. It's hard <laughs> to branch out. It's hard to branch out. I've been doing that with the cutting, you know, and I and they tell you not to dabble, and it's because it's it, like I say, if you want to go do something, we're competitive people. We want to go do it right. Yeah. You know, and so there's only so much time to dedicate to that, and, and I know for me going that way, that is just that is an event that I do every day, but it's different, right? Yeah. I mean, same as the raining, right? I mean. It, it's just a different event, right? We're doing the same maneuvers, but it's a different event. Right. And so, uh, you know, I get, you know, people talk about that a lot, like, you know, the, that our reining isn't as precise maybe as the, as the NRHA ran and things like that. Same thing with the cutting, but it's having to blend it all together. Like I say, it's just a different, and you have to have the appreciation for it being a different event. Like hundred percent, yeah. It, and like just, I've already seen, like I'll go hang out with some, like, some of the guys that do just straight cutting and they're like, well, you can't, you can't go over and do that. You can't do this. And, you know, the cow horse guys, they they get to pick their hands up, and it's different and this, that, and the other. And I hear that stuff, but I'm kind of one of those, like, as soon as you start telling me what I shouldn't you do, can do. And what I, and I, I, I'm going to be like, you know what, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'll show you. Yeah, I'm going to be able to do both. They're like, right. you can't do both. You can't yeah. do both. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I went like, really. Oh, okay, so you can't, you can't train and show horses and do online teaching like I do videos they say you couldn't do it you can't you gotta you gotta pick one or the other I'm doing it I've been doing it I've been doing it for nine years nice. well, wow yeah heck yeah and I'm long? still here yeah wow that's a while so but but no I will tell you I'm not gonna be one of those that goes oh a cow horse game that's easy right <laughs> <laughs> no it's not <laughs> no it's not well, that, well our man Casey Deary come to the world's greatest and went off pattern. <laughs> I and then he tells me afterwards, he says, maybe I should have went to a weekend show. I'm like, well, oh, yeah. no. <laughs> okay. Well, he's a special case. Though. Yeah. I mean, he's, in his, he's on his own class. <laughs> he makes me feel good because I'm only missing one tooth. <laughs> <laughs> he makes me feel good for a lot of reasons. <laughs> he is uh, perfect, though, when it comes to hitting baseballs in Globe by Field. Perfect. Yeah, so hit. far, one in a row. Yeah. And one I mean, in he a did row. have me pitching to him too. Russell, so. I saw. We <laughs> saw you guys out there, yeah, creating content. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Ben missed. Uh, hey, so so what are you riding here? I'm gonna ride uh, my Bay Mare CSR Laydown Sally, owned by the Gravers. Yep. And watch you show that one. Yep, with the tongue stuck out. What's yep. the boss lady showing? Uh, shine smarter. All right. What are, are you, you still here? I'm showing Hi. guns and dynamite. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Mm hmm. It's funny that the fence is what pulls everyone in. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew nothing about training, show horses, nothing. Roped and just cowboyed my whole life. And once I went down the fence, I had to do this other crap so I to could get to do that. that. Yeah. It's like this you have to do the exercises so you can play ball. <laughs> it just, yeah. That's exactly it what is it's such like a, it is such a draw. Well, this this little cow horse that I have, I, I don't want to do any more rain. I don't want to. <laughs> I'd have my sisters do raining on it because I'm 
Like, I don't want to do that. I just want to do the fence uh -oh. part. All I want to do is the fun part. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We got Rut the real row. boss here now. Rut row. <laughs> oh, the whole crew's here. <laughs> well, we'll have to change subject. Right? Yeah. Hey. No, more, no more talking about Karen. Let's clean it up. <laughs> we got a... We got some people behind us. You now. do have yeah. some people behind. Yeah, we're drawing a crowd in a tent. So what? What did you? Th you know, what do you think? Like when you go catch ride a cutter, which I somebody told me you do that a fair bit. Mm, no, I I don't show good enough to get catch rides. I just I've been training my own actually. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> what do you think the big difference is? Because I mean I know you know I mean it, do you think there's that big of a difference between our herd work and cutting? Yeah. There is because they, you have to have so much control with your hand down. I mean, because yes, they're work, you're working a cow. And yes, you need to keep that pretty pure. And everybody has their own blend to that, mm -hmm. right? And so some guys have more feet control, more control with, out of the seat of their pants. And some guys are more just a pure cow horse. Well, that pure cow horse is fine until you know, everybody's got a plan to get punched in the face, right? right? right I mean, once yeah. you take that first shot in the mouth, well, now what are you going to do? Yeah. Well, you got to be able to get yourself operated out of those situations. And so that has been a, that, that's been probably, that's been very challenging for me because like with the cow horses, we are going to show with our hands and then we're going to enforce with our feet. All right. And they are showing with their feet and they'll enforce with their hands. And so it kind of takes all the yeah, you, away. Really, you have to have them to accept your hands because if you need to help right. them, they can't them in tell. Position. They can't tell on my hands, right? right. Whether I'm showing bridle horse or snaffle horse, I need them to respond to a very light touch and not tell on me. Yeah. And so with them, they need to be, respond that sensitively to their feet and legs. And so it's like I kind of you kind of almost have to switch your. Are you you're doing trouble, the same stuff? Are you having trouble doing it? Because it seems like maybe if you were just focusing on just that. Yeah, you know, the, a lot of it is the, I don't get very many of them. I'm like, it's been fun. So I had one this year that I showed at Abilene that I showed that I trained him for, to be a snaffle bitter. I showed him, I made the finals at snaffle bitter okay. on him. And he went to Abilene and I mean, and was very respectable there. I made a couple finals on him and yeah. he was, he was real yeah. good there. Um, but he was a, he was a quality horse. Like he was good enough to go to the snaffle bitter fraternity. Okay, where a lot of times what I'm showing at the cutting is stuff that for one reason or other wouldn't be a cow horse. Like right. they didn't lope good enough right. or they didn't do right. this right. or they weren't strong enough. And so there's always kind of like that hole. And I haven't known what I'm, you know, I mean, it's been a really neat deal the last to do. Like I've done one or two every year for the last about five years and it's been very educational and it's really helped me may broaden my horizons a little bit there. You I know. mean, it seems like, I mean, I'd be curious. I sure, I'm, I'm assuming it's got to be the same. I know for the raining, you think about it over the years. Those special, great, those really, really good horses. There's a lot of times you'll look and you'll see some guy you never heard of. That's maybe doing a lot of things that he shouldn't be doing. And that horse is still, still doing, doing, it. The, doing job. the job. Yeah. Doing the job. I was that guy. <laughs> hey, I've been that guy too. And then you kind of either you figure it or you don't, or you know. But I mean, you know what I'm saying? When you see those horses, and maybe not everything's perfect, but man, you go, that but horse wow. is just doing it. Yeah. Is it that way, like with a horse? And like, could I take, would it be feasible that I got my hands on one that great that I could figure it out enough? Yes. To, to you know, I mean, Within reads, I'm not saying sure. that, you know, they're probably not winning the futurity, but they're there and you're going, man, if I had that horse, I could win it, you know, right. yeah. but that horse is doing it. It's not like he doesn't, you know, he's doing the job. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that that's very feasible. I mean, it I comes down to horse flesh. That's, almost it happened. It that's comes what's down happening now, Matt, because just like Chris used to said, when I started in the cow horse, the cow horses are ones that weren't good enough to cut or they weren't good enough to rein. Yeah. That's what they were. They, there wasn't really... A straight cow horse world. Great Ward Ranch was probably the closest, and they were uh, as much doing cutters as anything. And now you just don't do that anymore. You don't go taking something that won't work in one event, you can't go make work in three events anymore. Used to be you only had to be strong in one event and good in the other two, or pretty good and decent 
yeah. and you can make some money. Well, that is that's over. That's that's done. Now you've got cow horse guys going like, yeah, this isn't gonna make the fur turdy. Maybe I'll try to cut on him, or maybe yeah. I'll try to rain on him because they're not good enough to do all three. It's really changing. So what it's done is create more horses like that one you're talking about right now. Yeah. They're coming from everywhere. There's you know, more of them than there ever was. I'll tell you what, sitting there watching the world's greatest this year, watching the rain work, I mean, you know, no BS. I'm sitting there watching. I'm going, there's some of these horses that look like if they could rain. They could rain. Like even if you just changed the footing and did it the footing the way we do it, I was sitting there going, man, I... I'm sure glad some of the, I'm sure glad some of them aren't coming over because obviously the comment you know you could do it I mean it's a raining pattern you'd come over and do it but I was sit, I was impressed horses were free in the front end and normally you'd see them and there's still some that kind of do that yeah. you know but um, I got to tell you with some of those horses turning stopping the transitions guys putting their hand on the horse's neck and running circles and stuff I mean and it used to be what happened is our horses weren't worth enough. If there was, if you saw a horse like that in the cow horse, it was gone. Yeah. And if they saw the same horse, same deal with the cutting, it was gone. Yeah. We didn't get to keep it. Yeah. But that, like what we purses. were talking earlier, yeah, the purses, mm -hmm. the horse prices, they're starting to stay. They're starting to be there. They're start. It's starting to be a real place. We're we're turn, I mean, we're we're getting to to be an actual sport. You know. I mean, that's. Yeah. I mean, things like really. This, I mean. It, that's it's neat it to see. I mean, I grew up hearing about the Hollywood ties coming in, like in the 80s and 70s and 80s, and how the whole horse business was, it was crazy, right? And then, whatever, there was some economic crashes and things like this, and it just kind of shifted away from it. But now, like I say, you're seeing that back, and so getting to see this firsthand is... Well, and, the, and now they're coming in and not just taking. I think they came in before, and they were just riding, competing. Now, now they're coming in and helping us yes they're taking us along and going you know there's like hey and you know i don't know about you but it sure seems like we just needed the the eyes on what we're doing it's not it's not a hard sell no you know i mean hours and hours of it at a weekend horse show nobody wants to see that but to watch the sure. best of the best and our presentation has gotten so much better because yeah. it's we have a good enough sport to sell yeah because golf is on television mm -hmm. and so is poker. Mm -hmm. You can't pay someone to watch poker unless you present it properly, which they did on the World Poker Tour. And right. what, what happened to that sport? I mean, it, was, it wasn't even a sport. It was nothing. Yeah. There wasn't even a group of guys that were doing it in an association. There were just poker games at places. And now look at that thing. Well, and that brings me back to why I was telling you, you should do this reality show because like for me I'm watching because of the personalities I mean I like to play poker but I'm thinking about Phil Ivey that was my, my you know all these guys oh yeah them, you know and, and you start you just start following along and I'm not even like I'm a huge poker player I mean I'll play you know if you say hey, we're gonna play a game tonight I'm gonna play but I caught myself watching it because I and then they show a little backstory on it and that's where I think if everybody would open themselves up a little bit. You can't all be like Marshawn Lynch. Like, I'm just here so I don't get fined. You know, yeah. stuff like that. You know, <laughs> I, I only ride my horses. I don't do anything else. Um, right. You know, you gotta, you gotta, if you, if you want, sure. no, if you I want this, you, you gotta, you right. gotta no, open yourself a, up. That's a good point. That's a good point. I'm just hoping that somebody else wants to put themselves out there. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> I hear but you. But they might, but they need to see the world needs to see that people like you can marry that far up. And they want... <laughs> wow, man. <laughs> and if you I put give, somebody else people, in there... I can give people hope. I can give people that's hope. That's right. There's a lot of... There's us actually that, some truth to this. <laughs> <laughs> you put a hey, normal it's hard person being a, hey, in there. It's We're hard not going to show that. It's hard being a trophy husband. <laughs> hey, but look at that. I was talking to your wife earlier. And how about this event... You know, I was saying, man, you know, are you, she's like, you know, we're talking, man, this is great, having a great time. I'm like, yeah, it's guaranteed money. And she goes, yeah. She goes, this is the only show that we'll ever go to that we are guaranteed, what was it, like 65? 65,000. 65,000 before you even go in. It's like, and that's what I told her. I said, no wonder Chris is in a great mood because I said he's riding around. He's like, isn't this great? Isn't this great? <laughs> he's vibrating. It is. Yeah. And why wouldn't you be? Hey, when I see that many seats, like you say, I mean, 
like that that that's gonna buy plenty of diapers but this, that, uh, but but just to ride around i'm just riding around there this morning looking at those all those chairs and i'm yeah. like dude if there's a quarter of those chairs have people in them oh, tomorrow yeah. this is gonna be un flipping yeah. believable i think we're gonna be surprised you know just like at the world's greatest this year that place sold out not like they're not joking it was sold yeah. out they yeah sold there's sometimes they, they're sold out but you, right, you but can shoot not. a shotgun right, off but up they're there. not yeah. that one was and people in this country like especially for coming from california and you from california mm-hmm. out there they're not really trained to go to equine events mm-hmm. in this country mm-hmm. in this texas country they it's like basketball you're, you're, they go yep, I they that. just need to start getting what like you're saying with the poker tour and i did the same thing with ufc <laughs> once i started knowing mm-hmm. the fighters then i i wanted to either watch them win or watch them get beat like, yeah. <laughs> which yeah. either way you know <laughs> i agree you love him or hate him but you want to watch you yeah. gotta watch man i used to love watching cerrone fight just because he wasn't even that dominant, but he gave it oh, yeah. every time. Well, you, you look at like like you two. I wonder how is there in any of the sports, has it been a husband-wife duo in the professional ranks that are knocking out of the park together? Like, I mean, this is incredible. It's a, it's a I mean. Well, there's not very know. many co-ed sports. So, I mean, you'd True. have to be looking at, you'd really probably have to look at the poker game. And this is another thing, though. I mean, you could be sitting here talking about this, you know, I, you know, probably my wife is going to be a fan of your wife you know i mean there's a competition inside you know you're both you're both doing well which it's a net it's a net win for the team but i can just see on hey, a tv people, show people eat it up like that's what we get it, it we up. i mean they just that's they're the question like, we are you get mad? are you mad does it make you feel like less of a man when your wife kicks right. your ass that's there's, gonna be the first question i, right. I want to ask no. that right no. <laughs> yeah. no so there's a little girl hey so there's a little girl on the facebook i don't know what her name is but that question she wrote in her notebook and they videoed it, and they the mom or whatever comes in and like opens the pages. Did you see it? Anyway, this girl's asleep. Anyway, she writes page. Oh, she yeah. wrote you a question yes, too. Yes, on yes, there. yes, I did see it. Savannah. But uh, yeah, is that her name? Uh huh. So anyway, yes, yeah, she says, "What does it feel like when your wife beats you?" So Savannah, honestly, it it really can't be better because, like I say, that all goes into the pot. And yeah. the more she beats me, the closer I am to getting to retire and be Mr. Mom. <laughs> And so, I've got a, I've, I've already, I've ordered an apron that says "less bitching, more kitchen," and I'm going to wear it. <laughs> There's millions of them out there, but that so, one's yours, that right one's there. All mine. That one's yours. And so, yeah, I really cannot be happier. I mean, do, it's, do you ever have like, sir? Do you ever have like that? You can tell me. Like, do you ever have that? Like, I'm just gonna beat him today. I'm just gonna be. Or are you still focused on everything else and your horse and all that? But do you ever have it like? No, I honestly, I never think of it like of it as him against me or me against him because it's like, and I people must really not believe us when we say this. <laughs> well, I haven't. Re- I haven't heard it. This is new right. for me. So this is new. This is new. No, the the best case scenario at a horse show is if she wins first and I win second. Let me finish. <laughs> As if there's like a derby and a futurity at the same horse show, and he wins the futurity and I get second, and I win the derby and he gets second, there to where go. we can like both be up there on top. That's like best case scenario. If if that can't happen, then yeah, I'll take first and he can have second. <laughs> there it was. I was just going to say she's not going to be honest, and then she finally gave it up. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Only because I'm a girl, you know? Yeah. 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 yeah, the girl thing is a bunch of bull. We uh, need a yeah. men's division. We're I'm that. sick of them. Yeah. They're exactly. everywhere. Everywhere. Exactly. And it's not new. There was Sandy Collier and Lynn Anderson. Yeah. Go try to beat her in the bridal class. And they love that question, too, of oh. what it's like in a yeah. man's world yeah. and the glass ceiling and all that crap. They love it. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> we got schooled on that before our interview with her. Yeah your own wife yeah we turned her and uh, Haley Kinzel loose like at the end of oh. our six hours so if you listen to the first five hours of that podcast you can get the last half hour and listen to Sarah and Haley Kinzel just go back and forth oh, about I it it was, was gold. it was gold yes I don't know how many people listened to it because there was a lot of crap they had to dig through before they got <laughs> to it but 
Just edit that section out and replay it. Edit that section out. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Wait, who's who's on who's on your team? For this? What, yeah, what team what team color so, are you? I only think I've been thinking about is orange. Right. So I'm green. green. Yep. Green. green, it's me and Casey and Lindy Thorne. Casey and Lindy Thorne. Okay. Yep. And what about you, Sarah? Uh, Fernando Salgado and Adon. Adon. It's the International House of Pancakes. <laughs> Covering all countries. <laughs> Have you touched up on your Spanish and Portuguese? Un poquito. All right. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Numero you pass. uno. You pass. How do you yeah. say thank you in Portuguese? Obrigado. 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 Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're, doing, you're doing good. Thanks. Wow. Awesome. Now you got it. Got it. Yeah. I'm a quick learner. <laughs> I hit a baseball today. I heard. It's <laughs> cool. It was good when they were pitching to you and you're a right hander and you had the bat on your left shoulder. I thought you were just gonna help the ball right onto the catcher, your husband. Huh. I was afraid she was I I did violate my rule and I did coach just a little bit. <laughs> but I just to point her in the direction of the plate and not mm. swing towards me. You're facing never, the wrong way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> never coach someone you've seen naked. That's it. That's it. Yeah. I think Bob Abbott told me that once. That's true. Wise man. Wise man. What about... How did you... Where, well, yeah. I got, how, where did you... How did you... Where did you come where'd from? The, where did the horse bug get you? Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, Southern California... Where were you a kid? Where were you born? Long Beach, California. West side. Heart, heart, of ho- heart of horse country. Yeah, right in the middle of horse country. Yeah. Well, we just lost some power. No. Uh, that was a generator. That's just them. Okay. Yeah, no, no. B- yeah, born in Long Beach. And uh, my mom had horses as a kid. And she just started me out with like the little pony ride thing. And I guess, you know, I think I was eight or nine. And apparently I liked it. And so she brought me back. And I w- all I want to do is play basketball at that time. And then she put me on the horse. And I was like, I, I like this. So I started going back, taking. That is shockingly that loud. loud. That was yeah. loud. <laughs> really loud. So I started taking riding lessons as a kid, you know, like once a week, riding in the round pen. And it's actually, I started with English first. I did that for a little bit. And um, I just couldn't, I couldn't do the, you know, at that age, I couldn't do the, the tights and the boots and stuff. I mean, I liked riding the horses, but I just couldn't do it. So I started riding Western, taking lessons and stuff in the round pen, doing equitation and kept doing it you know about 10 years of doing all around stuff around southern california with terrible horses started with a i mean i must have definitely it was i'm supposed to do this i had a breeding breeding stock appaloosa that got banned off the racetrack because he was he he was (laughs) he was a pony horse and not one too many times went nuts and he and he was navicular too so that's how i started so three more i I started the bottom so then so I, i kept doing it doing it well then I see the stock horse at a lot of these shows, Del Mar, Santa Barbara, and I see these horses stopping and turning. And I'm like, man, this looks a lot better than what I'm doing. It looks cool. So that's where, it's, where it started. And, I, and I'm riding a lot now, though. Who you know, are you riding with in the all round? So I, I had a, just a real um, small trainer. Her name was Michelle Gardner at the time. Not a big-time trainer. Her husband, uh, actually Michelle Bloomquist later, her husband, Charlie, trained racehorses at Los Alamitos. Real, real successful trainer there. I got, got to go out there and spend some time and stuff. But she was a stickler for like the, the details, the, the basics and stuff. So that was that was good, which that was the foundation for everything I do now. But but then I, you know, all of a sudden now I'm not riding once a week. I'm riding like six, seven days a week. I'm giving riding lessons to adults at 14, 15. I didn't realize at the time she had it made, you know she's charging 30 bucks she was paying me <laughs> seven bucks a head score <laughs> baby she got it. to where she yeah i'm writing the name on the board and all these you know, i'm giving group lessons and she's but now she's not even showing up and uh and and I, i'm just there doing it and i i don't know but you know i don't realize at the time you're gaining all this you know experience that you're going to use later well then um you know i see a raining horse so i uh tell you a quick story quick i i'm in the was it the Pacific? What's the name of that? The magazine over there. Yeah, the oh, Pacific, Pacific Journal. Coast yeah, the, Journal. Yeah, so I'm looking in the classifieds, and I find a reigning horse. And my and I, my parents have no intention of buying a horse. And I find Jimmy Flores. So I oh, go out yeah. to his place. I, we go out to his place, and I try this horse for 7500 bucks. 
and I, he's, you know, he's thinking I'm, we're maybe going to buy it, and I'm not going to buy it, but I get a chance. <laughs> I get a chance to spit it, stop, and I'm like, okay, I'm done, I'm in. So I go back trying to Whoop. make my horse. Oh, stuff's falling down. <laughs> so, so I end up, I end up taking lessons. I'm like 17, 18, and and uh, Garth Brown moves to town. I start, I start getting a chance to ride a reigning horse, and um, it happened fast. Day after high school, I moved out to Arizona, worked for Dale Hendricks. Stayed there almost five years. And How'd you get hooked up with Dell? So uh, when I rode with Garth Brown, but you know Bud Lyon, mm-hmm. but Bud Lyon was not there, but he had his sister was riding at the time, and, and I knew his father. So I'd see his father all the time, Chad, and his sister rode at the same barn as me. Well, Chad, um, he's the one, he goes, hey, you know, I think you should go to Arizona. That's where everybody's going at the time. And uh, he goes, you should go to this Todd Berg and John Slack. So I'm seeing the Rainer magazine. These guys are together. I'm like, this is where I, this can be great. That's where I want to go. So um, I, you know, I'm riding at one of the shows there, and it's not going as good as I think it's going. You know, I think I'm, like, <laughs> so I'm on some horse that's just running off, and I, and of all people, I've got you know Nelly and C.J. Murphy. They're letting me know too. They're like, well, that's not very good. <laughs> you, you know how they can bring you back down to earth earth baby so uh i go up to todd bergen and john side with chad and they look at me and they're doing and, and now that i know because i've done this they're not in their head and i go well i really want to come out i'm gonna work hard and they're like yeah, yeah and they go yeah we're never we gonna see him again. we don't think we have a place for you to stay you know we don't have housing it's like shit so i'm like all right i guess this is over well chad says i think you should try this guy del hendrix that's all i knew about him nothing and I see him out there. He was at Costa Mesa, and I go up, and, and Chad introduced him. He set it up, and he goes, well, if you're willing to come live in my house and work for free and probably not ride very much, come on. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this, I, he was working for Osorio at the time? Working for Osorio. Yeah. And this is right when he was just getting rolling, timing-wise. So I roll out. This is the summer of 97. I roll out June. It's 200 degrees. My dad's bringing me there, and he looks at me. We go step out of the car. He goes, you can get back in if you want. He goes, <laughs> he goes you don't need to wonder if there's a heaven or a hell, because he goes, this is hell right here. <laughs> so I get out, and I go into Osorio, and I'm used to these little local stables. You know, at, in, in the city where I was at, there was one. It was Lakewood Equestrian Center. I go, and this is like a palace. I mean, it's incredible. And I look at all these incredible horses. I jump in the truck the next day. And actually, that first day... De- and Dell goes, hey, can you drive, can you drive a, a truck and trailer? And I, I'm 18. I said, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely I can. He goes, well, you coming? You're jumping in. We're going to the Derby in Oklahoma City. We're leaving at you know 3:30 in the morning. Jump the in the truck day. next day. And he and he goes and he goes and wins this event. We jump in. I don't know. We get somewhere in Albuquerque. And he goes, all right, it's your time to drive. And uh, well, I didn't realize it was a stick shift. Oh. And I'd never driven. A rig. Like, and you're headed know. there or headed back? No, we're headed there. There. And he's tired. And he's like, okay, you turn to get in. And I looked at him and I thought about jumping. And I said, well, you know, this would be my first. <laughs> so, and if you know Dell at all, it was a quiet ride the rest of the way there. <laughs> <laughs> and so we get there and I'm clean installed to carry it on. He wins the Derby. But um, long story short, I worked the whole summer, and then he offered me a job and uh, for next to nothing. And I did like a lot of people don't want to do now. I stayed almost five years and learned a lot about showing, you know, riding reining horses first because I hadn't really done it much. You know, and so, my bases were good, but the timing and all that wasn't there. And, um, yeah, so I started my own business in 01. But, um, yeah, kind of, I mean, ever since I can remember. I mean, I'd, I'd go to school with my boots and my jeans, my Wranglers and my backpack, go to basketball practice, you know. I wasn't, I didn't wear my boots and cowboy hat to school, I had it in the backpack. And then I'd get done with school, jump on a bus and head to, head to, the, uh, to the stable to go, to go ride. That's awesome. And now I live in Texas, I didn't have, I never, he couldn't make it up. What, no way, no way someone could have told you yeah. that was gonna happen. Were you yeah. any good at basketball? You know, I thought I was real good. I, was, <laughs> I thought, thought you were good, you were good at the rated too. I, I thought I was going to the There's, NBA. I thought I was going to the NBA, and uh, it, yeah, I mean, definitely. You're big. You're not that big. De- exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And where I grew up, that is what it was: was sports. There was more pro athletes that came through that area at that time than probably anywhere. Mm. So uh, it, it was a natural. It was an easy selection. When I got to be about a junior in high school, I was kind of looking around and. I thought, you know, I think I probably need to go down this road here with the horses, you know, just 
Yeah, because I not, might not I might not make the finals. I might not make it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not seeing as much playing time as I used to. It's not like I'm leaving this budding uh, career behind. Yeah, it's not. Well, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. This is a strong maybe. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't going to be the next Michael Jordan. <laughs> my, my mom sat me down and had a nice uh, encouraging talk to me about a sophomore in high school. Like, I don't know how much future you're going to have in this football thing. <laughs> and so uh, maybe if you want to start spending a little more time at the barn, it may behoove you in your future endeavors. <laughs> yeah. A little I'll more tell so. You what than, to do, but yeah. 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 Like I'm happy to support you, but uh, right. You, you know, in a nice mom way, in a nice mom way. <laughs> hey, you suck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I remember when I, w- I went to work for Todd in 2000, and you were one of the guys I really looked up to because you were well, an experienced assistant, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, I'm looking at those guys. It was you and Andrea, and, I mean, the kind of that era of guys yeah. were kind of right ahead of me coming up through the reigning ranks there. And so I, I knew who you were, yeah. Corey, yep, yep. And so, like I say, that's a uh, – yeah, I've been a fan for a long time. So I appreciate it. Likewise, likewise. Uh, I don't remember you not being there around – but I can't even remember where I met you. You were just I'm always old now. You, I'm just yeah. omnipresent. Like I'm, yeah. that's, 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 I have gray, gray, hair. gray hair. I've been here for Very. a while. <laughs> I just remember you having that one horse that just every year you just, that's the only horse you, I didn't think you rode any other horses. I didn't, I one. shouldn't have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's all you did was win on that one. Yeah, here he comes with that horse. He's bringing him out again. He's bringing him out again. <laughs> I can't believe you died so soon. I thought we had 15 <laughs> years left. <laughs> had some more victories. <laughs> <laughs> I need you, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what about your transition from uh, from working for somebody to the to having your own business? Oh, man, that was a big drop off. Uh, you know, because when I was at Mantra Surreal, it was, uh, you know, Horse Car- flesh. Carte blanche. Yeah, I mean, I have to care in the world and getting horses to show, yeah, doing show well. Up, get, get a show up oh, and get yeah, on. Yeah, it's like yep. it's no big deal. No big deal. It's easy. Then you start your own business. And now I'm riding a Dutch warm blood trying to make it spin. I'm riding a mule. I'm riding, uh, you know, paint, paint, uh, you know, grade horses. Yeah. I have like one decent horse that I could look on the pedigree back three or four <laughs> lines and say, I think it could be a reigning horse. So, so, so then you jump out and you're, you know, you're buying the tack and the stuff and you're, you're going, all right, here we go. And, uh, and it's not good. No, it was tough for a couple of years. I, I, um, cause I, I just was thinking like, man, I, what's going to happen here? Does it happen real quick? Dell got, he got fired from Osorio. And it was like, bam, he's moving to Texas like immediately. So I thought, well, shoot. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take some EMT classes and and get ready to be a firefighter if I need to be. That was like, if I don't get it, that was a backup. So I'm sitting there looking. I was almost getting ready to press the button, and and then then all of a sudden, then a horse comes in, you know. So, but what I did learn to do though, was to scrap. Man, I take that horse. So my thing was, you might have a better horse than me, but. I'm going to be willing to redline mine and I'm going to do things that I know that I probably shouldn't do that you won't do. I'm going to beat you that way. And so, uh, and, and I did, and it, and it worked a lot, you know, I may not win every time, but I'd be right there. And then, you know, you, you keep, you know, you get somebody that gets you a decent horse and or you buy one yourself. We've done some of that. And you just keep Partners. kind of working it. Yeah. You just keep kind of working it back until, until you get that opportunity and then you got to take advantage of those. So, so who was your, what was your first horse that really helped you when you're on your own? Man, that would Did you know that you could go compete, yeah, you know, that, like in the open? I bought a top sill with stud, or I didn't, but uh, Easy Odie Wiz is the horse's name. And uh, the horse had had success, but um, when I got him, he, you know, I, him and I just clicked. He's, you know, we started scoring way higher than what he'd been doing. I won a gold medal with uh, Team USA, you know, World Equestrian Games. And, and that horse there, that, I'd say that easily that horse was, was the horse. that, and, and then that was my kind of first introduction to a horse of that caliber. Because normally, like when I rode, when I was an assistant, I'd lope some of those horses around that felt like that. But I never got to show them. Right. Ever. So to take a horse in like that, 
I was like, man, this is like, this is easy. This is like cheating. This is like, yeah. Yeah. So how long had you been training on your own when he came? Uh, about four years. Not, it's, yeah, no, it's not no minute. No, no. Looking back on it now, you go, oh, it was just four years. Yeah, but huh. not oh, then the, it was. That's a lot of ramen noodles in oh, four years. Man, it was forever. I can tell you about some of the horses. And my, and my wife can tell you about some of the horses. You know, when you're in the middle of it, you're like, I'm trying. I'm mean, this this horse is going to be our. I'm going to make it. I can see something yes, in there. Yes, I'm There's, gr right? you're grasping. I think I can train this horse into doing. And you know, it's never going to change leads. It's just not. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not. You know, it's not going to do it. You know, but but uh, yeah. So you just kind of keep clawing your way up. Other people have different ways of doing it. I've always seemed like I've always had to do it the hard way, and, uh, and I'm I'm okay with that though. But that's four years after. How many years of being an five, assistant? Five, five years there. So yeah, you're yeah. nine so years into this little journey. It ain't just overnight. Mm -mm. Yeah, these you get these kids that want to roll in. Oh well, shoot, I'm gonna come and go there for six months and. Be a horse oh, trainer. Tell me about <laughs> it. Like, yeah, geez. that's why I'm like. I feel like I'm just getting started. You yeah. know, what I mean, and I'm. I don't know how many years in. I don't want to count them up, but I mean, 62. I'm sure you probably feel the same way. Yeah. Yeah, 62. No. <laughs> Thanks. I can count on you, Russell. Appreciate it. Hey, I want to jump into the gold medal deal. I want to know what it's like being a kid from Long Beach and now representing your country on a horse like how flipping cool is that i don't even know it happened so fast i don't even know that i really even was that ever even on your radar or was no. that that horse just come along and then that the horse came along and um it was just timing and and uh then there was a qualifier and I, you know we, we hauled one horse all the way to lexington to kentucky and and then i ended up winning the thing i still have that's my highest score to date still to you know 231 and a half out there nobody was expecting you know they knew that was a nice horse, kind of like what we were talking before. But they're like, now nah, you know, I was marking a lot of 222s, 224s, and then bam, everything came together. And then next thing you know, we're going to Germany. And uh, I mean, it was it was it was crazy. Now, do you, when you hear the anthem and stuff and all that, it's it's a uh, for sure you're sitting there and it's it's an incredible feeling. And then and it was a team thing too. So that was a different deal. You know, you're cheering for your uh, you know your other riders because you you know you 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 know you're wanting to bring the gold home which we were able to do but um yeah it was um it was unreal then the over there the horses is a different which it's getting to be like this here equestrian over there is huge you know there's soccer and there's horses so i mean you'd go anywhere in there you see videos town. they got signs they're holding Nuts. signs up and then like you could always tell like at the reign of Turkey when there was a lot of european when the yeah. europeans had come over and they would like that place out. Jim Norris. Like, yeah. hey, what are you guys sitting on your hands for right yeah. i mean it's <laughs> I mean, you'd be, you'd turn the corner to run, stop, and they'd get the old, oh, yeah, I mean. <laughs> oh, yeah. It is crazy. So what was the reception like to just the general people while you were there? We were getting ovations on the airplane. We'd go in a restaurant, and, and people were getting up clapping. They're, they were showing it on live TV. So now you have all of the jumpers, dressage riders, they're all. I mean, we're, we're walking around at that World Equestrian, and a lot of people that have been to multiple ones will tell you that that one was probably the best. Because um, it's, I mean, it was just this huge, you know, like circus fair, and it was all for horses, and everybody wanted to have a cowboy hat. When we got done, we'd go, and they'd have this little, you know, ceremony, almost like the buckle ceremony at the NFR, where they're giving awards out and stuff, and we're throwing, signing cowboy hats, throwing them out, and I mean, it's a sea of people. And I mean, I'm not talking like 100, I'm talking like four or 5,000 in this little square. There was like you know eight or nine thousand in the little arena, and then the the um, the the, the, uh, the I don't know what you would call it, the stadium course. It's sad. I don't know, like a crazy amount, twenty, thirty thousand people, and they're. I mean, it's just packed. It was it was Jesus. just nuts. And this is back in '06. It's a long time ago. So that that was um, you know that that was that was unbelievable. You know, and that was the shot in the arm too early. Then I was able to do a lot of clinics after that. You know, people, hey, you want, you know, we want you to come over and do a clinic. So I went over to Germany, did a lot of clinics. You know, make a look. You know, you got to make some money trying to fill gaps and stuff. And yeah, because just because you got that one, that's the other thing. People think you get that one, and then they think, well, it's just they open the floodgate and they just bring you a couple mm -hmm. of those every year now. And it's like, hey, mm -hmm. so that one's gone. Yeah, that's what I dealt with a lot. I get a good one, bring it out, he'd age out. I look around and you know. Nobody coming. Nobody coming. So you get a year or two, you maybe drop down, get another good one or two, you know, 
and you're back on again. And now, um, you know, I've got fortune. I've got the depth now where I've got multiple horses. But in, in, in even then now, you're always still going. Looking yeah, around at these looking derby. Around, yeah, yeah. Looking around, looking around. But, yeah, it's always now, – now the game, the game now is just – to me, the competition is – getting the horse flesh because we're all good we're all talented we're all work hard now you say oh wait, so and so works hard you don't get any there's no medals for working hard anymore that's if no. you, that's not even in the equation anymore correct you, you 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 have to work now it's to me it's can you scout you know can you find those horses that's the truth yeah that's a whole other event in itself oh, as yeah. well i mean that's something that we've been really working on the last few years and really yeah. focusing more on you know like say how like it used to be you could go kind of shop the fall for two-year-olds <laughs> you better you're shopping in the fall you better be looking at yearlings or yeah. wainlings or yeah. shoot see what what'd you breed hey what'd, what'd you breed that mare yeah. to last year you know yeah. what what's fixing to hit the ground can we yeah, talk because, about that because the because every like matt says everyone's working hard but everyone needs the horse and now it for a while there it was senseless to breed mm-hmm. but it's starting to be like hey you know, if I want something for me, I better get a hold of some embryos and mm-hmm. breed to what I want and, and have it coming out there where I know I can go go get those horses from because you're not just going to roll in to Matt's and say, hey, what do you got for two-year-olds there? He, because he The needs ones you them. want are the ones he's going to want, and there's, yeah. Yeah. even if it's a different event. Yeah. And there's no sense if you have six of those there's no sense in get rid of one of them because you got to go all the way till three-year-olds yeah 100 percent. and you want to go fish in the four-year-old pond yeah (laughs) Yeah, ain't nothing left but this stuff that somebody the only magic there is if you find something that you blend with that someone didn't and that's rare everybody trains so well now that's getting to be way less of a yeah a deal yep i agree yeah, especially what about um matt how about balancing once you got the uh clinics and lessons and stuff balancing that with your training and keeping your training like not letting it overrun it or did it for a little while and yeah you know that was a thing i mean with with today with technology first off i i kind of dove in i i started kind of studying some of this stuff and learning some of it myself as far as like how to make the videos um, but then, you know, quickly, you know, was, that was taking too much time. And so we've got a, um, you know, we've, we've got a production team in that, that, that does it for us. But it, but it really was only taking three or four days a month. And um, it, you know, as far as the producing the video, now the, the, the answering comments on social media, my wife and I do that. And that takes a lot of time. But um, as far as, and, and I do a lot of that, you know, at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day. But as far as making the video, it was like four days a month. If you think about it when you're training, at least for me, I couldn't sit here and look you, tell you honestly that six out of seven days of the, of the week were 100% real productive. Like I, I, I kind of feel like there's a few days there that are maybe you're cruising them around or whatnot, but they're not as intense or they're not as, they're important, but not as, um, at least for me anyway. Um, and I'm not talking about the young horses, but like the older ones. So, so what I did was I do it like on the weekends. You know, I just had one day. But, but the things like with, with online, you know, I would try to keep it real, throw the mic on, and I would do things that um, were real. I mean, it, was, you know, it wasn't like I was making it up. I mean, I'm doing stuff that I really do, and I feel like it helps me. Because then it's like when you go to a clinic, you're like, oh, I better, I better think about what I just said. And, mm-hmm. and my practice and what I preach. So it was pretty easy for the most part is, um, you know, now I've got, you know, I've got close to 300 tutorials on there that the hardest thing is finding new topics. The thing for me was when I go to do something, all right, now, if your horse does this, do this. Well, most of the time they weren't doing the, the wrong thing. They right? weren't doing the wrong thing. And, and that's what people need to see. But um, I never really felt like it was. Um, I think if you have decent time management, and I'm no, trust me, I'm no specialist at it, but if you, if you do it right, you throw the mic, and you, know, and you have somebody, and the guy I have, Ryan Goldsmith, is incredible, incredible at editing. So I just get on and just go ride, and then just talk. And I, you know, learn how to kind of set it up a little bit and put it together, and then next thing you know, it's, it's there. And I kept expectations real low, 
And but then, you know, you start seeing some progress and, you know, people are saying, man, this really works. And um, it's it's for me, it's a lot of fun. You know, I where can people it. find that? Matt Mills dot com. Yeah, gold medal formula. There's a seven day free trial. It's twenty four ninety five a month, but for seven days you can watch it, all the videos you want for free. Um, you can get out of it. But then um, you know we're adding new videos every month, and then we add little perks and stuff. You maybe can get some merch, or if I'm having a clinic or something, you get a little, a little money off from that. But um, when did you start this deal? Two thousand fourteen. Oh shoot, you've been at that a minute. Yeah. Nine so years. did a lot of just producing the videos first, just getting the the library, and actually Warwick Schiller got me started. We were at an NRHA judges oh, seminar or school, and he had started and was doing well. Now he's off the charts, and that's all he does. But he's like, oh, I think you could do this. And so I started making some videos, got the library up enough to where we had something to market. And then, um, you know, social media, my, you know, my, my, my wife has jumped in and helped a ton with that. And Facebook, Instagram. Now I'm doing TikTok, YouTube, all of it. We, we put stuff out there and then, um, you know, we've got a ton of in-depth, really good stuff on my website. Stuff that, you know, from raining, of course, but then a lot of, you know how a lot of this stuff, we take it for granted. The things that we do for a basic rider, I mean, it applies to all their horses, makes them better. I mean, you know, we're not going to yep. mess a lot of that stuff, but we don't even think about lead departures, things like that. Stuff that you just do. Maybe you don't. Stupid <laughs> lead departures. Goodness. Hey. It's the hardest part about raining. MattMillsRaining.com. <laughs> hey, I'm going <laughs> to write that down. <laughs> yeah. That's what the pin was yeah. for. Yeah. Man, there wow. you go. There I'm you telling go. you, like, <laughs> we were at judges school there, and Bill asked me to just talk through a raining run, and I don't know, it was Kelby on that big, long main horse, you know, and I mean, and he steps his son of a gun off, and he lopes off. Beautiful. I mean, it's plus one and a half. I, I'm, I'm him. I'm like, hey, heck yeah, we're I'm all over him right here. I'm like, dude, you don't like, and I don't think judges realize how hard that is. Yeah. But I know, I'm not gonna lie, I hadn't paid that much attention to the rain in the last few years, and I don't know, it was last year, maybe I watched the Turdy or Derby, and I'm like, everybody is stepping these things. That lead departure is so incredible. Far. I mean, yeah. they're on a drape. These things don't even tense a muscle in their neck, and they just step off there and and it's oh, yeah. on and i'm like that is i mean i feel a little silly being in awe of these lead departures but i mean you know sliding and spinning is exciting to watch or whatever but they do it or they don't well but, that's yeah i mean that's great you appreciate that because it's kind of one of those you know almost thankless i mean oh. you know nobody noticed unless you do it bad right no that's <laughs> right. it <laughs> right i think the i came back and started watching the rain again and what changed to me was the circles holy mackerel yeah like getting it on oh, yeah and bring and coming back with nothing mm -hmm. oh well and i think pr so rain, pretty to watch the rain has done such a great job with their judging too and with evolving their industry standard mm -hmm. as far as that goes i mean like i said you can from the outside looking in especially if you kind of step away for a minute and come back and look because you'll see the ebbs and flows of it. Like, you'll see where it's just getting carried. I mean, it's like, you're like man, are these guys just getting carried away. It's like a 229 right. to get a check. And then a year or two later, it's like, ooh, a 221 wins the fraternity. And it's like, yeah. Yeah. man, do they Gotta suck? Get it. No, they've just... Got to get it back there. It's like the industry caught up, and then it's like, okay, now this is a zero. Yeah. Like, that zero is not the same zero it was 15 years right. ago. Yeah, it's like a, yeah. And so... What's the biggest change you've seen, say, the last 15 years in the rainy? I mean, the purses, the, the money, I mean, number one, you know, I mean, but as far as like the horse training, um, I, I think everybody's just gotten better. There's more, I mean, before you would say, you know, there was probably a dozen, 15 guys that you think could maybe win the reign of fraternity. And now it's, uh, uh, I couldn't tell you how many, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, there was a time like the riders in Europe, they never could compete over here ever, ever, <laughs> ever, ever, ever. I mean, they, and then you would look at them and you go, Oh, these guys are good. They're doing good over there. They come over here and they would just fold. Well, I'll tell you what, there was like what two in the run for a million last year or one anyway. Um, yeah, well, Sarah, she was, Sarah she got bred, so yeah. she did not do it. Yeah. So, I mean, just overall the horse training, the horses, everything has just gotten so much better that um, I, I don't know that really, somebody asked me this the other day, they were like, what had changed? 
um, did an interview for this thing. What changed that all of a sudden, you know, would you change in your training program that now you're here? And I, I said, I haven't changed. I said, she goes, you, you know, you kind of, I said, I haven't changed anything. I said, to be perfectly honest with you, I said, you know, I'm always trying to improve, but um, I got better horses, you know, and that's, you know, there wasn't any secret sauce to it. I got better horses. And so to me, um, I think there's a lot better horses out there. And I think the training just gotten better. A yeah. lot more of them. People think you get real smart and you get on a good horse. Well, isn't that something? I mean, and, you know, it's I, like, dude, I've been doing the same stuff last you, 10 years. And, I mean, <laughs> and we've all seen it. You know, it's like you just, uh, you, and you just smile because, you know, the same person that's sitting there going, oh, man, you know, can you help me with the spin? Or blah, blah, blah. As soon as you go have a couple runs, whereas you're never going to see, they're going to go, let me go over to Chris and ask. It's, it, it's, that's just the nature of the game. And that's, yeah. you know, you guys know, you can't get too high, you can't get too low. Yeah, no, you know, that's enjoy, it. Enjoy it when it comes. Cause that's it. You can't let that identity get wrapped up in it, man. They that's for you sure. Quick. They <laughs> real <laughs> quick. Yeah, that's a, oh, darn it, just it's so quick. So you can go down so fast right there. And, like, and I don't know. And I think people struggle with that as they go through those ebbs and flows of their career. You see those guys that just, I don't know, that's all I can think is that they just tie their identity up with how much they're winning. And when that's not happening, it's like, yeah, they fall apart. They fall apart. Them. They don't, I mean, they, they, and then the next thing you know, their family falls apart. Yeah. And, you know, you, that's when you see them guys get so bad on the alcohol. And, you know, I mean, I'm not the pot or anything here. I mean, but I mean, shoot. Well, it just but, reminds me of the guy that got you started, Jimmy Flores. You know, there's so many people that strive so much to win the fraternity and win the biggest stuff and be up there. And they'll go for a while, and then you see them burn out and go down to nothing. But there's a lot of people like Jimmy Flores that were in the business and affected so many mm -hmm. lives. And he just did it on a steady course. And then Jimmy Flores Jr. comes, and same thing. Yeah, They are rock solid. They're Excellent not horseman. uncomfortable uh, wherever they're at. They know they're in the horse business and they're good at it. Yeah. And they don't have to win the world's greatest right. or the fraternity to get the satisfaction, yeah. I guess, out yeah, of it. And so it then, the, reasons. Yeah. yeah. And so then their life is whole. And you can see a lot of people that have those, those good horses come. And then when they're gone, they're not whole anymore. It, yeah. They let it eat them, and, and they shouldn't. You can still do a good job on horses and get them moved out. A lot of people do clinics, and there's a lot of ways to make this business work for you other than having to have the very highest end of it. No, absolutely. I, you know, and actually, I could thinking on that, you, you have to, you better enjoy the whole process of this. The, I mean, the, the, the hours at home that nobody sees when you're when you're riding one and it's not going right and you're trying to get it figured out that's one thing that i will say that i've gotten better at at when i was younger i could i could ride on just my natural show showmanship um you know i, I don't like to think i was there i was pretty confident about that though i could take a horse that i didn't really care what it was riding like i'm probably going to get it figured out and then now it's gotten so competitive you can't do that anymore and as i pulled yeah. off a lot of stuff i mean where you'd be like man how in the heck is he going to get this horse shown? I know you're that kind of guy too, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, so, so I got real bored with, I just would get bored at home. You know, I would, I would rather play horse show. I'd rather go to horse show. I always say it all the time. I wish I could go to horse show every week and let you train my horses. Um, but you can't do that. It you doesn't work. You no. can't. It, I mean, I, I, I did, I did well, but I wasn't. And then, you know, I wasn't going to be happy with just making the finals, you know? So, so, I guess I just kind of, it's not like I had an aha moment. It was like, I think I got my ass kicked enough <laughs> 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 that I went, you know, every day is important and I've got to get out there and I've got to, and I understand now because I have failed so many times. I understand that those days are important and, and it matters. And now I've gotten to where I enjoy that. Even when, even with the result doesn't end up the way I wanted you know, being I didn't win, which I'm relying on five people's opinions, by the way, which that changes. Right. You know, if this panel says you were stellar. This panel says you were 10. So I don't let that control how I feel. I, I, you know, if I felt like my horse worked well, 
based on what we where we've been at, I'm happy. Now, of course, I'm more happy if I win. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> right. But, but yeah, I mean, the dedication to to the the whole life, you know, staying late now for me. No, I don't even really, you know, my wife's calling me. You got to come home. You got to come even still now. I mean, I, 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 I love doing it. You know, I love I love the whole process. What about uh, family? How's it? You got two step kids, right? Yep. Yep. Two older. They're still in Arizona. Alec and Emma, they just they just were here a second ago. They came in for this. Nice. Yeah. I think when, when you shoot, s- they're grown. Oh, yeah. They're grown, grown. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, when they came in, I was like, yeah. Oh, those are the kids. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, Russell. We talked about my age earlier. We're yeah. not that yeah. old. I'm not that. Hey, I'm not that. You might be old. I'm not that old. Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm not that old either. Yeah, my wife is. is, but I'm. Not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that was after she left. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't you yeah. believe I looked around. He looked. I looked around. <laughs> but but no, when they hear, hey, you're showing in uh, in the Texas Ranger Stadium, all of a sudden. You know what? I think I can get on the airplane to come for that. If I, <laughs> if I said I'm showing it Will Rogers, yeah. we've seen that enough. Yeah, we're all right. But then I've got, we've got a 16-year-old son, Ryan, that um, he's here, moved to Texas with us. He's probably the most natural person on a horse I've ever seen in my life, and he has zero interest in doing it. Really? Oh. Zero interest. He'll show up like if a girl, show, cute girl shows up, he'll come up and ride. And you'll think he's been riding every day. And uh, I, I call him uh, human ace promazine. I, I mean, he just... <laughs> He gets on a horse and they just relax. And he just doesn't want to do it. You know, if there's movie stars out there, if Taylor's got something going on, he's going to show up. Dad. And he knows which horses, which horses to call out, too. And he's paying attention. He calls out all real, real good ones. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I'm ready to ride. But but so his deal, he, uh, he's he got a little um, outlaw go-kart. Oh. So we go, this has been, this has been an experience that we couldn't have had in Arizona or Southern California. We go into these dirt oval tracks. There's one in, you know, they're, they're all over the place. And uh, he's got this little 250 cart and he gets out there getting after it. Like, looks like a little mini sprint car. So that's, I bet that's fun. I've oh, seen man. them. It has to be so much fun. That's a lot of fun. Oof. That's a lot of fun. Tough oh. game too. You get out there and you got to tweak this and tweak that. And they're looking at me. Have you, you know, what what air pressure you tired? What's the split and this and this and this? And I and I just go, guys. I know a different type of horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> I would appreciate anything you can do to help my son. Because it's funny, you get outside. It's like, I mean, I could, do, you know, I can do some stuff and figure. But you got to do it like right here, right now. And I mean, it's a lot of fun though to watch. It's funny, funny when though. you see those kids that have the accent, the talent. And the access oh. to do mm. w- whatever. I would imagine that professional baseball players or professional race car drivers, kids, are probably going and buying horse riding lessons. And it's just the way it is. It boggles my mind. Well, it just it doesn't take much, though. <laughs> no, I know, I've noticed. But it just what, what draws you, you just can't make. Yeah. You can't make that happen. No. Matt's dad wasn't into horses. He no. pulled Matt away from whatever knowledge he had for him. Wasted. <laughs> what was your dad's deal? My dad was a cross-country truck driver. Um, you know, hard-working yeah, and guy. And this loser lower. can't even drive a stick shift at 18. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> yes. <coughs> That's gold yes. right there. Oh it's true. God. It's true. <laughs> It's true. So, so, my, so, it's true. I can drive one now, though. <laughs> well, so, so, so you do the, the tooth thing again. So, so my dad's got uh, you know ninth grade education. He's from he's from Louisiana, Louisiana. You know, he's moved out to California. Met my mom. My mom's got a great job, uh, but he's old, old school. And so uh, he's driving trucks. Within well, now, he's working in Long Beach. He's driving uh, trash trucks. He's doing. He's he- operating heavy equipment. But um, his thing was, you got to go to college. You know, you're, so many of our families go to college. I had great grades and um, great, great grades. And and I had a scho- I had a scholarship for music. I played the cello, um, lots of stuff. But all I wanted to do was ride horses. And I wanted to play basketball, but that wasn't working. And so he was. He was not good with. Um, <laughs> he's like, you're gonna be. Told you. He goes. I've been driving this truck 
for the last 25 years, yeah. and you're going to just go ride horses? And he said, you're going to amount to nothing. He goes, <laughs> nothing. you're going to be a journeyman. You're going to travel from ranch to ranch. You're, not gonna, you're never going to make any money. You need to go to school. Saddle uh, tramp. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, the best thing I did was when I got to Arizona, we had 300-something miles in between us, and he couldn't get to me, and he's not real tech savvy or anything. So, um, I, you know, he, 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 he told me, he's like, this is going to work. You know, but he also saw that trainer that I grew up riding with, and um, I guess if you if you had a thought that that was where I was going to end up, Apex, yeah, you would go. I guess you know you know you always want your kids to do more. I'll guarantee you, he wasn't thinking that I'd be showing at Globe Life Field. <laughs> right. I'm like, hey, Dad, it worked out pretty good. And he goes, well, you know, I told you that, so I kn- I knew that you'd make you put a chip on your shoulder and you would. You know, you would step up and you'd go to do something. But, yeah, I've always had a lot of people, t- you know, people telling me things that I can't do. And, um, you know, and you hear that a lot with stories, with, with different people with their stories. You, you, tell me, you tell me you can't. And either you're the kind that just kind of cowers down or you kind of go watch this. Yeah, it just, it just, you just don't. Like, my grandpa was a cattle trader at a high level. And I go train horses. You know how many people yeah. would have loved to have had the shot at that. And it's not oh, that I don't yeah. even like that industry. I just wanted to ride. It was just dumb, really. Yeah. <laughs> I could yeah. have been trading and moving cattle and everything and just wanted to ride. Not even to train horses, just wanted to go cowboy. But you can't make the kid see mm-hmm. that that's not gonna work. <laughs> yeah. My dad later says, yeah, after I'd been doing it for quite a while, I was like, yeah, Watching you as a kid, this is kind of the last thing I thought you'd be as a horse trainer. <laughs> <laughs> Training wasn't really your deal. Just getting on <laughs> and going. Well, I know that after today, I can tell my mom, <clears throat> I played baseball in Globe Life Field. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and if Ben would have got the content, you could check it out on Tell Horse <laughs> Full Contact uh, YouTube page or something. But no, Ben was oogling the girls and Globe well, life field. the good thing is, without Ben getting the contact, it will always be as good as you thought it was. You're darn right. <laughs> if he had yeah. the content, this would be a crushed dream. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you and I know what it yeah. was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I pitched, I pitched two balls that Casey Deere was able to hit. Yeah, that's that, yeah. case in point. Case in point. <laughs> yeah. That's well, a weak pitcher. <laughs> it got within reach of the bat. I mean, like, I felt like that was a win. Yeah. It was 12 foot. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Underhand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Russell, like everything else in my life, I try to not let my abilities affect my enthusiasm. All right? So, careers have been built on less. <laughs> right here. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> At this table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could not drive a stick shift at 18. Oh, Son of a truck man. driver. Do you know Son how of a truck driver. embarrassed his dad had to have been? Did you tell him that? I've never told him that to this table. <laughs> <laughs> you should give him a heads up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At about an hour 15 into this deal, he might have his heart broken. Yeah, yeah. No, I've never told him. I know he, even today he'd be shaking his head. Going, uh, <laughs> so how old is your dad now? Uh, he's going to be 78 this year. Oh, geez. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, in May. How'd you win with 18? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, young yeah. father. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing for that. Right. <laughs> Russell and his age jokes. My goodness. We think. What else you know? <laughs> you know, I'm afraid. I, I don't know how much I want to tell. <laughs> I feel like I'm on trial here. <laughs> Keep circling back. So, 18. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think I you mean, wouldn't be the first one we've had to drag a brush with the law out of. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this has been great. I mean, this has been a lot of fun. I like you know you guys' format here. Is, well, it's pretty it's laid awesome. back. That's what happens when we don't know any better. Yeah, that, yeah. I think it's it's real. 
Yeah. yeah. You know, there's no no BS. Yeah. No, we try to avoid that. We try to avoid that all. We can't wait. You, what about like working there at Taylor Sheridan's place all the time? I mean, like I said, hey, this guy's yeah. done so much for all of our deal. Like, I mean, that's. I mean, it's it's uh, it's great. It's a great environment. It's a competitive environment. Right. Because uh, I, I, I'm a big believer. You you typically are or you gravitate towards who you're around your your surroundings and so uh he's non-stop constantly working on another project on well, he's an time. intense guy intense 10 steps ahead but still has time to go to the gym every day which i you know i've started i always enjoy going to the gym you got to make time for it i think it's good for a lot of different reasons so i'm I, you know i do that that's something that i've added but um yeah, he comes out and rides. you know when he's there he rides has a real busy real busy schedule but um, it's just, it's good to, to see it, you know, even, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm right there watching when he says, hey, I think I'm going to do, I'm going to do this, this, and this. And normally when somebody says that, it doesn't happen. When right. he says it, within a few months, all of a sudden, they're starting it. You know, I think I'm going to film a TV show right here. And next thing you know, here come the trucks and they're, they're starting it. And, you know, I mean, it's. I think I'm going to start selling, you know, steaks from the four sixes. I, and this is before he bought it. I think I'm going to do this. We're going to rent. And next thing you know, you're getting steaks delivered to your house. And we're going to have a restaurant in Fort Worth. And we've got two now coming. No you know, kidding. One and, you know, Wait, you what are the, which ones are they? He bought the Cattleman's. Oh, right on. And um, then he's right up the street from Letty's. He yep. bought, um, bought a building there. It's like three or four streets up from Schaefer's right there on the right. Uh-huh. He's gonna make Bosky Ranch. He's partnering with Bobby Flay on that. How cool is that? So, but so so to watch that, and then like with the horses, he, he, that's all he wants to talk about. That's all he wants to do. And he's not making money by putting us on Yellowstone. No. Matter of fact, no. They're telling him, "Why are you doing this?" And he they makes, told him he can't make it work. Yeah. And he's like, "Oh, I'll show you." Yeah, because yeah. he'll be in the middle a, of the plot, I'll and then you just like stop for. <laughs> Five minutes, and we're just watching people work horses, yeah. whether what event, yeah. one event or another. And I mean, it's like somebody somewhere has got to think that's a bad idea. Yeah, that's <laughs> all I mean. of Hollywood. And and then he's like, and he knows that he he's got him. He goes, well, hey, they need me, and he goes, I'm doing this. And so I think a lot of people don't realize that because you know they, they oh this guy's doing this this and this. he's doing this for all the right reasons. He just loves horses. It's all he wants to talk about. You know, I mean, he's talking about all this other stuff, and we go over, you know, hanging out or whatever. We're talking about something, the cutting, the cow horse, the raining. That's all, that's all he wants to talk about. Well, and, um, it's just, uh, it's incredible to see. What is insane is if you read anything about him and the number of projects he has going, his time is so sought after, mm-hmm. being the producer of so many things. And then how does he even have the energy to then do a restaurant and then do the sixes and then do this and that and then come to this and even just hang out yeah like most people with that what it takes to produce how much he's producing the workload is got to be crazy most people would collapse under that alone much less then come and do this kind of stuff for us well what i see he doesn't sleep very much number one yeah and uh, those people never do no and he's got some great folks working for him, with him. A lot of people that he's brought up, a lot of people that he's had with for years that um, he's just brought them up the ranks and, and he doesn't micromanage them, he lets them do their job. Um, with the horse, the horses is, is, I think that's the balance point from, from what I see. Uh, and, he's, and he said it, that's the only time when he comes to that arena, he'll set that phone, because he's got it always. He sets that phone on the, on the fence and he rides that horse. And he's focused if he rides one or if he rides four, he is riding that horse. He doesn't ride over and check the phone to see. That's how he got away from the phone. Exactly. So coming to these events, it's still the same. It's still, he's doing it, it's fun. You know, he comes here, he's not, that, that, that's what it's all about. And that's what I got, you know, folks are like, hey, you need to call and he needs to change this and change that. I'm like, you know what? Well, you gotta remember, what was it like before this was here? Right. So pump the brakes for a minute and just, Enjoy Some people, you could hand somebody a gold brick and they'd complain about how heavy Thank the son of a gun was. Thank <laughs> Thank oh, you. Man. We have a lot of those. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. No, I mean, like I say, they, when, when this whole deal started, they're like, hey, you got to know when, as we get into this, like, there's going to be things about this that aren't perfect. Right. Like, 
I'm fine with that. Yeah. Like, as long as my horse is over here in a safe spot, and if it's not, then I would have sent her home. Yeah. And we are going to have an even playing field for yeah. everybody to compete on. Like, other than that, who cares? If you don't like something else about it, load that something gun up and there'll be that number six guy would be glad to be here 100 percent. that's all i keep saying they go what do you think what do you think and i go well you know yeah the ground blah 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 i said but you know what as long as it's the same for everybody we're good that's it that's right as long as it's the same yeah. we used to show on ground and the raining it was absolutely no different uh no different. before the drag came right the kaiser drag came and we had one person that was going place to place dragging arenas and there was a unification of ground before that they might have a disc out there working i mean you never i forget who it was i don't know if it might have been uh rick weaver or somebody was saying they were at some rain and like on the infield of a racetrack on grass but they like had judges like that were somewhat edgy i don't know i forget what all the deal was but he was like ain't never getting no better than this right (laughs) right i mean mag seven used to still have the motor parts in it from the truck deal the that they ran the, demol- the night before. And that's what you showed on. So it's not that we can't. Yeah. And when it's presented like this, just like you said, hey, this is a fight. Mm-hmm. And we're all in the same ring. One guy doesn't have a club and the other guy have a yeah. pillow. This is the same ring. We got the yeah. same tools. Let's just see who can do the hey, best it like here. It looked like on that sand this morning, I mean, them few guys that run, run stopped, I mean, them things look like they didn't have no trouble with it. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yeah. So, no. It's no, not. No it's, it's not even. There's no such thing as bad ground anymore. Mm-mm. There's good ground and better ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was always one of my favorite rains to go to, though, was that Glen Rose. You, you probably would have never, never went to never Glen Rose. To it. it was horrible. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was absolutely horrible. But you went there, you got your stuff unpacked, you got on your horse, you went and trod them around, loped them around a little bit, let them see the walls because you didn't want them to know how bad that ground was. Yeah. And now we're going to go to the bar, we're going to have some nice time tonight, we're going to show up here tomorrow at 8 o'clock, we're going to get on, we're going to trot them out, we're going to go horse show. Horse and show. I mean, get it it's on. like, this is awesome. I mean, isn't it? Well, I mean, it, sometimes it worked, sometimes yeah. it didn't, yeah. but... It worked better for those of us that did it like that than them guys uh-huh. that were out there trying to Schooling. fight through it all night long. I remember at uh, one of them coastal cl- uh, fairs, Teddy Robinson and uh, is there. We're working cow horse. And the cattle are from 800 to 350 pounds that they're sending in. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> I mean, it is crazy. So Teddy's great at jumping them out. So he gets this little ratty one, and it's running him all over, and he's, he's, it's bad. So the only thing he can do is jump it out and get a new cow. He jumps it out. It goes uh-huh. down this alley. They turn it around and send it back into him. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make that up. That was the greatest ever. You can't make that Jump up. him out again, Ted. Yeah. <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> It's come a long way from there. You go in there and look at that gigantic building we just walked out of and think, dear Lord, from the backyards to the, to this? Right. This is crazy. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Hey, so before we get done here, I'm going to, I'm going to steal a question from my friend, Mike Roberts, the Converse Cowboy, because I think his billboard question is phenomenal. And uh, to the, if you could have a billboard and have and get a message out to as many people as you wanted to get out, what would it say? That's a great question. It's a great question. I think it'd be work hard and have patience. That would go with about everything you'd want to. Yeah. Yeah. That's about cool. you. Oh, I didn't. I did an interview with him the other day, and it was in then some. Mm. Yep, yep. Those are the best. My mom told me taught me those three words, and I was like, I don't know, maybe the second or third grade. And I don't. It wasn't really a, wasn't really a thing that followed me through life. I mean, I mean, I did it, but like, it wasn't like she harped on. I don't know that she ever said it again. But man, when she said it, it hit. Mm. But interesting. Yeah. What about you, Russell? You know, uh, you took a good cut. Take a good cut at it, because. Um, I was always in trouble for doing things not correctly with my dad. He's 
pretty straight line. And I remember this one time we're doctoring calves or something, and I come in there and I missed, but I had done everything right. I got in the right spot. I swung, I threw when I should. And he says, hey, not catching doesn't matter. You took a good cut at it. So take a good cut at things yeah. and it'll come. Just keep taking a good cut. Mine needs a little like more it. explanation, but I like it. I just, I think that sometimes all the stuff we were talking about, worrying about winning, being everything. Now, I don't know how to, not to go in there and try to mark as much as I can mark on whatever I'm, I don't know. I, maybe people need inspiration that way, but I, for me, it's you just go do the best you can, get, can do and the hell with the rest of it. Yeah. Someone will come tell you who won. No, don't don't true. put all that on on you. Just be take your best cap, be proud of what you do. Yeah. That's great. Advice. If you're not, change it. Right. <laughs> you know. Exactly. Yeah. I, I think that's something that you would really appreciate. You start doing the cow horse because I think having I mean, obviously you've not done the reining at the level you have. But I mean I was in there for a little while. And like I say, at some point we are have I mean we can only do this so good, right? Yeah. And there's only so many things that are going to separate these winners. To where the cow horse deal, you can go honestly get, you can go cheer, and you can hope the absolute best for your buddies. And if they beat you, that's fine. But because it's not, I mean, it, you, and that I think goes back to with the little girl's question for me. Like, yeah. if my wife beats me, that's great. Then that means she did her job today. Yeah. Right? Now, I did, as long as I did my job today, that's fine. And then them chips fall where they may because we're really not trying to... I'm not trying to beat Russell. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to beat you. I'm. It's more like the golf. I'm trying to beat the course. Yeah. I'm trying to do my job. And if I do that, then like I say, it takes that power away from the judges, right? And, you know, I'm not giving my power to them, just like you were talking about earlier. I mean, if he was good and we didn't mark enough, yeah, well, that's fine. And if he sucked and they marked him a lot... Well, don't get to thinking that you're yeah. special. Yeah. I mean, because, like, just take that. and Because yeah. you're going to take them from, I mean, from time to <laughs> It oh, yeah. happens the it's other way way out. more yeah. often. So don't just take it. Don't puff your chest out and act like you really did something special here. Because sometimes it maybe it was just your day. I think that's great because I, I, in the rain, it, I, I feel, you know, I, I feel like I preach that. I have to remind myself. And, you know, of course, everybody who I ask, like, like those reality shows, who is it that you want to be? Who's you? And then I go, I always, I say, you know what? I'm trying to beat myself. It's me and my horse. I can't control what you do. I can't control what you do. I want to have my best day, and I hope you have your best day, and I hope my score's higher. Yep. But um, I know a lot in our, in our, and I'm envious of that. I see, as a matter of fact, I was watching something, and you were cheering at the back gate for somebody, and uh, we don't have a lot of that. We don't have, no, I'm not saying everybody, you know, not everybody's not wishing somebody bad, but we don't have people out there, you know, at the back gate cheering for you. You know, other there's a handful of people, but it, but in general, right, the close, yeah, it's not really like that at all. Everybody's pretty, and it, it didn't used to be like that. I don't re- at least I don't remember. Maybe it was I was assistant or something, but now it's it's real. Everybody's, you know, I'm going this way. Yeah, and, stay in your yeah, lane. I'm going that way, and I'm going this way. And we're secretive, and we're not, you know, we're not sharing. I don't want you to know what I'm doing, and vice versa. Yeah, that. I'm yeah. hoping that of these events help bring help a rate bringing all of us the cutters and rainers and cow horses together i hope that it helps break that up a little bit yeah and i because i worry about the cow horse getting bigger richer more famous and losing that because it's why i'm here it's the only reason i'm here when i went from ranching and came to the cow horse that lifestyle, uh, that culture was in the cow horse. Yeah. It was like, let's get it on. Uh-huh. And we're still all going out together tonight yeah. and laugh about who won and who lost. Yeah. And I don't, if, if it lost that, I don't know that I would stay. I don't know that I could, I don't know if I'd put up with it. Yep. <clears throat> I might just for the fence work, but that's the only right. reason. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I just hope that mixing this all up again gets it to be more of an enjoyable and a fun and trading ideas and horses yeah. again. 
I feel like that's one thing I feel like is the cow horse and the reining horse have grown apart. Mm-hmm. And they used to be, it used to be you could rein a uh, cow horse or go the reining more yeah. so than cow horse and go the cutting. And now it's kind of switched the other way. And the reining blood has, we're losing it yeah. a lot. I, w- I wish that would come. I don't believe that that. Those are two entirely different horses. It's running, it's stopping, it's spinning. Those maneuvers are all used in ours and that sport. I agree with you 100% on that. Yeah, like I say, I think it just it has gotten so specialized. Those horses are so just, man, like I said, I don't know. The last one, one of the last ones I had, somebody was like, well, they tried it. And they're like, well, he's just not quite finished enough. And I'm like, well, you knew better buy him. Because he's as finished as he's going to get with me riding him. That's right. <laughs> he's gonna get, he might get be a more finished yeah. heel horse, but this is as, this is all the rain I'm it. doing on him. Mike. This is it. <laughs> uh, what is a favorite five minute of your life, or a real memorable one? And it could be someone told you something that just plays in your mind it could be random it could be some an, an act that happened but some little clip that you're always like it's always coming back to you man that's a good question that's a real good question and it can be life or horse training either yeah. one hmm like my wife's was, uh, I always remember hers because it was, uh, she watched two horses ahead of her, like maybe in the, I don't know if it was in the open finals. It was the first year she made the open finals. I don't remember if it was in the finals when they go around. But like there was two like million dollar riders that went ahead of her and they both lost cows. And she was like, well, to heck with it. You know, like, it can happen to anybody here. Let's you go. Know, and let's, let's just go. <laughs> doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. And she said that was really, uh, really like, that just really stood out to her. Yeah. I don't remember my, my, what mine was. You've had a couple. Yeah, yeah that's why I don't remember. One of my big ones was being a trone. I had a customer leave me, and I was, uh, I had, we were close. Like, we had shared rooms and done all this partnering stuff, and he said, and I was kind of whining about it, and he said, hey, here's the thing. I was whining about how much I had given, and then he went away. He says, here's the thing. If you charge for everything you do, when they leave, you don't have to feel bad. It doesn't yeah. matter. It's just simple. And, and, you, and to a point, you know, like you were talking when you're young and you're trying to get horses, you do do some partner stuff. And but most all of them never worked out. <laughs> <right>? Almost <laughs> always, because what you give, they feel like that's the price on the menu yeah. and it doesn't yeah. mean that much. It's almost, I've even gotten to where when I do give things on a bill and stuff, and I still do, I put what it was and then what I gave. Yeah. Like I I do the same it's thing. It's 50. Yeah, yeah it just is. no to, charge, but here it is. Yeah. Yeah, no charge this much and I don't know I I've been able to balance it better since he said that. It just made so much sense. Yeah. I I was actually giving him more than he was asking for and then I was mad that it it right. wasn't it didn't hold him to me well. Yeah. It's just the way it is. I think probably there was, I can't remember who told this to me. It might have been Sean Flaherty, maybe. Somebody told me, one of those old timers. He's gonna <laughs> <laughs> Somebody told me, no matter, no matter what you're riding at home, just always remember there's always a horse out there better than the one that you're sitting on. Always. And the, and, the, and the whole thing was to keep your eyes open. Like I was talking about the, the competition of having more, you know, having, getting good horses that yeah. don't get caught up. Because you get, you know, you got your, you know, this horse is good. Then you go out, sit on, I go sit on your horse, and I go, holy moly, there's horses out there four notches better. Mm-hmm. And so that, that one's always stuck with me when I start, man, this is a really, really good horse. And where normally I just get set, all right, I'm set. I don't need to go shopping anymore. Now I just kind of try to have my scouting hat on at all times. I'm going, is there one better out there? Is there one better than this one? Mm -hmm. So that's one that's stuck in my head. Sarah's back. Do you have any questions for Matt? How long have you been married? Hmm. You should probably get this one right. It's going to be 
18 years this year. So 18 years. 18 and years. she probably is the one that kind of keeps your business running and does all the behind the scenes stuff, huh? Mm-hmm. She does a lot of it. My mom does a lot of it. Oh, and really? Kind of, yeah. Oh, wow. My mom does a lot. Yeah, the, between the two of them. It takes it takes two of them. Yeah. Sure. She told me she thought it was 38. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Felt like 38 to her. <laughs> Well, then she'd be in jail then for... <laughs> <laughs> she was close enough to do it in any way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, she, she does does a lot of that stuff. Oh, you know, her, her and uh, my mom. What would be your strongest advice for a young trainer? And I would say probably breaking out on his own, whether it's coming from uh, being an apprentice or, or just saying, hey, I'm going to train horses. Well, I would steal a little bit of what your 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 advice from Benny was because I had the same experience. So I'd give stuff and I'd be thinking, and in my mind at the time, this is going to be a good move. The money that I was going to make, it's going to it's it's not going to be enough to make a difference. But this horse is going to take me here, here, here. Almost every single time, those deals ended up bad. And so I would tell him, and I just told this to someone the other day, if you can figure out whatever it takes to get enough money to for you to survive and try to focus on the quality of the horse, not the quantity. Don't get caught up into trying to have 15, 20, 30 horses like I did, because most of those horses aren't, and, and, unless you're that guy that's just happy training like Jimmy Flores Jr. Jimmy, and you're, you're just happy. But if you want to compete at a high level, you got to have great horses. And I wouldn't give the stuff away. You got to find, you might be hungry for six, seven months till you find the right person. But um, the right customers, the right owners will move the needle huge you know and and but and you get the wrong ones you're never going to go anywhere you know and then you're going to get like you said you're going to get mad you're going to give stuff away and you're not going anywhere so that would be my advice i'd even say i wish i had done it back then i think i'd have been better off to work a side job and only have a you know one or two spend all my time on them that were that were worth the time until i got those the, you know those better horses and i feel like i lost quite a few years messing around with extremely average horses yeah Lauren uh, Fredericks an old Indian guy friend of ours told me you don't want to be known as a good man with a bad horse yes because you'll there get all the bad horses and none yeah. of the good ones there it is <laughs> yeah and you look at some of the guys that came out you know and I thought you know some of them had you know everybody's some got the thought start on third base you know they had backing right out of the yeah. gate and those ones that had talent and had the backing right out of the gate they immediately went to having success. And I mean, it is, you got to have the horses. I had to go train reining horses. My parents wouldn't buy me one. You know, it's, I mean, that started with that. I mean, it's, I mean, you're, you're exactly right. You, you got to have a good horse. Yeah. Yeah, that's outstanding. What else, Sarah? <laughs> our, our guest you questionnaire, our, our, our guest questionnaire is failing on us over there. It was mid text message. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, Matt, we can't thank you enough for your time. I know your family got here, and we have, uh, yeah, burned up a lot of that. Burned time. up a lot, and like I say, I think, uh, I think we kept the editing to a minimum. So I think Ben's gonna be able to get this dropped before we show tomorrow. So good luck tomorrow night. Awesome. And yeah. Let's go get it. Yeah. Thank you. Good Thanks luck to you. Thanks for coming. Yeah. It's Mr. Sixty-five thousand dollar man or more. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it'll all be going in her pocket. Thanks, Why? Russell. This was fun. Yep, you bet. Yeah, Matt. thanks. Been you bet. And don't for forget to check out the Matt Mills. You're the man. Matt Mills Raining. Dot com. com. The Raining. Yes. com. Please it's got it. a little ring to it. It does. Yes. Gold medal formula. And even with my sixteen bad years, team. sixteen years in the business of that. 15? No, 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 nine, no, nine. nine. Oh, my, see, nine. my math's yeah, off. I'm yeah. good with numbers. My yeah, math's off. Nine years. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, I'll check that out. I want to get them lead, lead departures cleaned up. See how much yeah. you can do after you're 50? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm done now. <laughs> All right, Matt. Thanks again. Until next time, go fast. Make good decisions. <laughs>